So today we're going to be making a gun that shoots at the mouse cursor. So this is the project that we're working with. We've just got a very simple player character controller who looks at the mouse cursor. So let's add a gun. I'm going to add a new scene. I'm going to create a new 2D scene. I'm going to rename this to gun. I'm going to add a sprite 2D as a child. And we're going to pass in our gun.png. We're just going to move the position of the sprite so that it's around the origin here. That way, when we rotate the gun here, it rotates around the handle. So we can save that. I'm going to create a new folder for this, call this gun, and save that. I'm just going to move the sprite in with the gun as well. Okay, so now I'm going to add a script to add a new script, gun.gd. So basically, what we want to do is we want to rotate the gun towards the direction of the mouse cursor. So the way we do that is with a function called look at which if I hold control and left click will take me to the documentation, which says it rotates the node so that its local X axis points toward the point. And the point is the vector two that you pass in. So we're going to pass in the get global mouse position. And get global mouse position just returns a vector two that is the position of the mouse in the viewport. So I'm going to come into the player scene. I'm going to attach the gun scene to the player, and we're going to run our game. So as you can see, the gun looks at the mouse cursor, but when we go past 90 degrees, the gun is upside down and looks a bit weird. So the way we're going to fix that is if the gun is pointing to the left, we're going to times its scale by minus one. Now Godot does all of its rotation calculations in radians. Instead of using rotation, I'm going to use rotation degrees, which does it in degrees, which is a lot nicer to handle. One issue though, is that you can see if I print the rotation, it's possible for the rotation to just go you know, into a huge number, right? It can just infinitely increase if I keep spinning this gun around. The way we're going to fix this is we're just going to clamp the rotation so that it can only be between 0 and 360 degrees. So I'm going to type rotation degrees equals wrap rotation degrees 0 and then 360. That makes this a lot easier to work with. So now I'm going to say if our rotation degrees is greater than 90, and the rotation degrees is less than 270. So that'll mean it's facing left. You can see if it goes past 90 all the way to 270, it's part, it's facing left and we're gonna to wanna to flip it. Otherwise we can just keep it normal. So let's change scale dot y equals minus one. So we're gonna invert it. Otherwise we're just gonna set our scale dot y equals a one. So let's run the scene now. And you can see that when I turn around, the gun flips. So now let's add some shooting. I'm going to add a new scene for our bullet. And I'm going to do another 2D scene. Let's add another sprite, which will be our bullet. Save. Let's make a new folder for bullet. And let me rename this to bullet. All right, there we go. So we're going to add our scene. So let's define a speed for the bullet. So const speed equals uh, 300. And in our process, we're just gonna set position plus equals transform.x times speed times delta. And what this is gonna do is that every frame, it's gonna increase our position by the direction the bullet is moving times speed times delta. So I'm gonna save that and I'm gonna go to our gun scene. So what we wanna do is Every time we click the fire button, we want to shoot a bullet. So if you haven't already come into your input map and just add a new action called uh, fire or shoot or whatever, you can do this. Just type it in here and then click the plus button. And then I've got it set to the left mouse button. So you can just set it there and add it like that. So I'm going to use this one fire. So I'm going to write if input dot is action just pressed fire. So if we just press the fire button, we're going to create an instance of the bullet. So bullet instance equals bullet dot instantiate and then we're going to add it to add it as a child of the game so get tree dot root dot add child bullet instance and then we want to make sure that the bullet is coming out of the gun so we're going to set bullet instance dot global position 
equals the gun's global position. And then I'm going to do bullet instance dot rotation is equal to the gun's rotation. And then we're going to save that and run the game. So as you can see, when I click the bullets shoot, but you can see currently they're shooting out of the handle of the gun, which looks a bit weird. We want them to come out of the barrel of the gun. So I'm going to come back into the gun scene and I'm going to add a marker 2D node. I'm just going to drag this uh, just here, just in front of the, uh, just in front of the barrel here where the bullets should come out. So I'm going to go back into my script. I'm going to create a reference to this marker and I'm going to call this muzzle. So this is going to be the position that the bullets spawn from. And instead of setting the bullets global position just to the gun's global position, I'm going to set it to the muzzle's global position. So if I run the game again, you can see now when I click, the bullets come out of the muzzle like that. So one extra thing is that if I come back into the editor and I click remote here, this will show you all of the currently instantiated scenes. So you can see we've got our root here and we've got our main scene and you can see all here, all these nodes. These are all the bullets that we've instantiated. It probably isn't great to just have all these bullets hanging around because they're not really doing anything. They're just like flying off infinitely into the distance. So what we probably want to do is when the bullets get a certain distance away, we want to free them from memory. So the way that we can do that is in our bullet scene, we can add what's called a visibility, visible on-screen notifier 2D. Now, if we add one of those, we get this little pink box thing. And I'm just going to make this a bit bigger. Just going to do this. And basically, what we want to do is when this pink box leaves the screen, it will fire a screen exited signal. So when that signal fires, we can then run some code to delete the bullet from memory. So I'm just going to double click this signal here and connect it to our bullet. So we've got that here. And I'm literally just going to write Q3 in here. And that will delete the bullet. So if I run the game again, and if I click on remote, and then I get my game back up, you can see when I shoot some bullets, they get added, and then they get deleted when they leave. 